as you know, the content management space uh, continues to evolve, we're starting to see this push towards microservices, headless content management, and that's going to be ultra relevant because again, the compute paradigm is shifting. Uh, more channels for compute are, are coming into the fold. So the need to get content to various channels is becoming increasingly relevant. This is Velocitize Talks, and I'm Andy North. I'm joined today by Lamar Hines, CTO of Barbarian. Lamar, thank you so much for being here. I'm excited to be here. Glad to connect. Let's just start with your uh, new company, uh, Barbarian. You joined recently. That must be exciting. Tell us a little bit about Barbarian and uh, the value proposition they bring to the market. Absolutely. At Barbarian, the core focus is about really integrating creative and technology to help drive brands as we move forward. So there's a strong focus on looking at creating the next generation of direct consumer experiences, and I'm very excited to join the team. Tell me about the Barbarian Labs that was announced recently that uh, that's under your purview, and it sounds like an exciting project. So that's our consulting practice, and what we're looking at there is one, how we can create an opportunity to audit ecosystems. You think about the new landscape from a digital perspective, and it's really about breaking down those organizational silos, mm -hmm. creating connected technology to help drive values for brands that are looking to increase revenue, decrease operational inefficiencies, and ultimately create great customer experiences. It's really about thinking about the customer first and not how an organization is structured. So a lot of the audit work that we're doing is looking at that customer experience holistically and helping brands level up there. So that's one key value proposition there. In addition to that, we have more focused innovation sprints that are focused on very specific tactical things and helping to accelerate uh, delivering those uh, uh, you know, things, whether that be a product or service. And then the last piece is really rapid prototyping, looking at how emerging technologies can get integrated into what brands are doing. That's exciting. And it's interesting that organizational silos would be a technology issue at some, with some of your customers. How are you breaking some of those down and, and what's been the result? Yeah, I think it's uh, thinking about that on three levels people, process, and platforms. So how do you create uh, connective tissue between uh, those concerns? And then ultimately, how do you let technology sit under that as a foundation to connect people to allow things to run uh, in a seamless fashion? Are there any technologies in the market right now or, or on the horizon that you're really mm -hmm. excited about and looking forward to working with? I think the rise of customer data platforms and customer experience management when you're thinking about creating an opportunity for data governance. And, and when I say that, it's thinking about the data supply chain holistically. How do you activate data across marketing and ad tech? How do you sanitize data? How do you reconcile uh, consumer records when you think about all the different channels that a brand touches with the consumer? How do you bring that together into a seamless experience? And I think there's going to be a lot of value in driving the future of customer experiences through those platforms. It's interesting. You talked about data. Uh, personalization has become the big buzzword for a lot of digital marketers. Do you see us getting closer to that type of personalization where it's not necessarily creepy? Uh, you don't have too much information about someone, but you can cater your messaging almost at a micro level. Yeah, I think. For, for uh, the future, it's really about brands earning the right, so providing value for consumers, and as they're providing value, slowly progressively profiling those consumers, and then leveraging that data to bring more value back to the consumer. What role do you see AI playing in this? Has it, has it had a more increased role? Uh, I think we're just really kind of scratching the surface there. But ultimately, I think artificial intelligence and machine learning give us the opportunity to really drive additional value out of the data that we're collecting so that we can be more predictive and provide you know, great customer experiences from an operational perspective. It's also creating an opportunity to create uh, efficiencies uh, from an organizational perspective. 
So you've been very hands-on both uh, in your previous career at RGA and, and here at Barbarian mm -hmm. uh, with a, uh, global clients, uh, suffice it to say. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you see coming up for them, both for them and for Barbarian from a technology perspective? I think it goes back to you know the conversation earlier where it's like, one, how do we make sure our technologies are connected across the organization? to drive great customer experiences. And then from there, it's thinking about that, you know, customer journey holistically. You know, how do we, you know, go from A to B, you know, device A to B, platform A to B in terms of where someone's activating socially or what they're doing offline in a retail store or a pop-up location. Yeah. As CTO, uh, your role is to sort of make the technology seamless so that the marketers can get their messaging out there, to provide that user experience. What types of challenges have you seen making that technology seamless so that it's not in their way, it's no longer, we've got to overcome the hump of the technology before we can start marketing? Yeah, I think that really comes down to, uh, as technologists, uh, ensuring that we really understand what the business needs, what the business outcome, uh, the business outcomes uh, brands are seeking, and then also, uh, most importantly, just lis listening to what you know the customer is looking to get out of the relationship. Switching gears to open source uh, as a topic, open source has become a hot topic in the industry, obviously, on a variety of levels, starting with Linux and moving on to a variety of different open source projects. Where do you stand uh, on using open source versus proprietary? I think it would probably depend on the use case, but mm -hmm. uh, do you see the pros of using open source? Absolutely, I think, you know, the, the uh, world is just you know being proliferated with innovation and a lot of that comes from the open source communities that are creating technologies that give a foundation to accelerate innovation yeah so i think it's very critical and actually it was a big factor in in me really uh wanting to come to barbarian because they have such a strong culture and history uh within open source a great example of that is the Cinder project, uh, which was really heavily used across agencies, consultancies, and brands to create immersive experiences. That was work that came out of Barbarian. It was originally developed for some commercial purposes, but immediately open sourced. And you know that's really created an, an opportunity for many people to create uh, amazing experiences. Mm -hmm. So you know, being with a, a company that is really giving back uh, to the world and, and how they create, and creating new opportunities for creativities for other, uh, you know, it's, it's really an attractive thing for me. Let's talk a little bit about social media and mm -hmm. is it still a viable tool in your toolkit for use with some of your clients? Uh, have we kind of moved beyond the social media and gone into, into other technologies? I think social media will continue to be key. Social commerce is, is becoming very relevant. Uh, leveraging influencers for brands is, is something that's ultra relevant as well. Uh, some of the work that we've done at Barbarian recently, uh, JBL as an example, we had a scenario where we were trying to create an opportunity for customer engagement. Uh, and in that scenario, you know, putting together a, a social plan to go across, you know, the Instagram, the Twitter, Snapchat, mm -hmm. etc., reaching customers where they're at was a, a pretty big thing. And ultimately, you know, being able to, to uh, touch uh, so many people wh where they're at creates that opportunity for brand awareness, brand advocacy, et cetera. There are some in the industry that have suggested that the website is on the wane uh, and has mm -hmm. fulfilled its purpose and new technologies will soon replace it. Uh, where, you, where do you stand on the, the current status of the website and where it's going? I think it will continue to be relevant, but it will change form. Uh, I think part of that is uh, the transition in the computing model. So we went from you know the desktop computer to the mobile phone and tablet. And what we're seeing uh, now is the emergence of uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. And I think with that new computing paradigm, we're slowly gonna get from the you know, phase of infancy to a scenario where AR and VR are you know, really penetrated across the market and, and widely used. And you know, I think it's kind of the Zach Morris phase, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the big cell phone. Uh, it's really clunky and, and everyone kind of, kind of laughs at it now and maybe dismisses it. 
but it, I think, will become very relevant. It'll become, you know, much smaller, and 5G will play a you know, pretty critical role in that in being able to serve up content in a more seamless fashion to a, a smaller device uh, over time. I want to drill down into that a little bit because 5G has been a, a huge topic, uh, mm -hmm. obviously, with China to sort of taking the lead with it in the U.S. coming along. Uh, what do you think 5G, what sort of changes will 5G bring and what will that enable from a marketing standpoint? You know, as, as we go back to that AR, VR example, you look at like the Oculus, Magic Leap, et cetera, these ultra kind of big devices because you need to have different hardware pieces to make things happen. When 5G continues to evolve and, and uh, really reach mass penetration, we're going to get to a, a world where a lot of that hardware can be removed and things can stream into device. So I think that'll play a, a pretty uh, critical role in helping to make augmented reality and virtual reality uh, something that's ubiquitous. That's exciting. Do you see Barbarian Labs uh, getting into that anytime soon? Absolutely. We've already done a, a lot of work with rapid prototyping for our clients and innovation sprints that we're doing with clients are starting to focus uh, on those areas as well. Recently, we did something for JBL uh, around the Snapchat lens, as an example, which led to a lot of uh, engagement for the brand. That's awesome. One of the questions we like to ask our guests are, is there a book, a blog, or a podcast that you'd like to share with our viewers? The Anderson Horowitz uh, A16Z uh, podcast is definitely a favorite of mine. I think they do a great job of bringing a, a collection of different thought leaders, whether it be founders from startups that are disrupting the landscape, investors that just have such a great knowledge of what's going on in the disruptive space of startups and enterprise, and also bringing in uh, thought leaders from the enterprise. They do a great job of uh, a mix of subject matter experts that are leaders in the space, so it's not just reporting on a blockchain and artificial intelligence, et cetera. They're bringing that first-person narrative about innovation that's going on in the world. Excellent. My guest today has been Lamar Hines, Chief Technology Officer at Barbarian. Lamar, thank you so much for being here. Thank you.